Here's another example that we're going to go over and we're going to use the sample space approach. So we're going to practice listing out the sample space. We decide to flip a coin and then also roll a six-sided die and we're doing this at the same time. So you can kind of think in one hand you have the die, the other hand you have the coin, and you are flipping and rolling at the same time. Let's list the sample space, the possible combinations here that we could have the possible outcomes. So we're not always going to have to do this, but if we're using the sample space approach, obviously we're going to have to do that. So I could get a tails and one. I could get a tails and two. I could get a tails and three. And you can see the pattern here. I'm listing out all the possible combinations with tails. I could also get heads and one. Heads two. Heads three. Heads four. And the last two. Heads five and heads six. If you think about it, this is it. This is all of the possible combinations. These are the possible outcomes of this experiment. So if we count these all up, we get 12. The other way that we could have done this is to consider, well, <clears throat> how many possible outcomes are there for flipping a coin? Well, there are two. There are two possible outcomes for flipping a coin. You could get a tails or a heads. And there are six outcomes for rolling a six-sided die. So using what's called the fundamental principle, the fundamental counting principle, we can just take 2 times 6 to get 12. And that gives us the total number of possibilities. We decided to list them all out, but even without listing them all out, we could have determined that there are 12 items in our sample space. Now what we want to do is to find the probability of getting an even number. So I'm going to go through, remember that, the probability of getting an even number is going to be the number of times that particular outcome, the favorable outcomes, the outcomes that describe this situation, divided by the total number of times in the sample space, the total number of elements in the sample space. And that was in the previous video, the previous video that we just watched. So the number of elements in the sample space are 12. There are 12 possible outcomes of this experiment. And those that are favorable to this event here are those with an even number. So I'm going to change colors and I'm going to underline all the ones that have an even number. So heads 2, tails 2, tails 4, heads 4, tails 6, heads 6. So there are six favorable outcomes. There are six outcomes that would satisfy this event. So if I calculate this, 6 divided by 12, if I'm asked for the probability, this is going to be 0. 0.5. The probability of getting an even number is 0.5. We could also, if you were asked to find the percent, what's the percent chance of getting an even number, we can change a probability into a percent by moving the decimal point 2 to the right. So that would be equivalent to saying 50%. If we wanted to write as a fraction in a reduced form, it would be 1 half. So these are the other possible ways to present this probability as a percent and as a fraction. What would not be right is writing 0.5%. That's a common mistake. It's not 0.5%. It's either 0.5 as a probability, or if we change it into its percent, it would be 50%. Now let's see, if you want to pause the video here and try to answer this problem, find the probability of getting a 5. If you want to pause the video and try that, go ahead. I'm going to move ahead. I know that the favorable number of outcomes are 12. That's not going to change, right? Or excuse me, the the number of items in the sample space, the possible outcomes are 12. And those with 5, those outcomes that have a 5, there are 2 here in red. So there are 2 out of a total of 12. If you were to put that in your calculator, this is going to be approximately 0.17. Which, if I wanted to write that as a percent, it's approximately 17%. And if I wanted to write this as a reduced fraction, it would be 1 over 6. So these are the other ways that we could present the information, but if I'm asked just for the probability, 0.17 is better. The last thing we want to talk about here is, what's the probability of getting not 5? This is what's called, and you might see this also, as the complement of getting a 5. So getting a f the probability of getting a 5 was 0.17. The probability of not getting a 5 well, let's actually just go through and count. Not getting a 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
there are 10 ways that we could not get a 5 out of a total of 12, which if you put that in your calculator, it's going to be approximately 0.83. Now, I could have figured that out even without calculating and counting up all those 10 values. The reason why is because for numbers 3 here, number 3 and number 4, these are called complements of each other. Complements. Not complements like you look nice. It's complement. They complement each other. And with a complement, if the probability of some event A happens, plus its complement, which we're going to write with A with a line above, we know that it's going to be certain. In other words, the probability of A happening plus the probability of it not happening is, going to, is definitely certain. It either happens or it doesn't. So when you see this little line above a, a letter or a number here, in this case we could have wrote the probability of not 5, maybe you could have seen that as not getting a 5. Now that's rare to see it that way, but don't get confused if you see that line above. That's saying the complement, not getting a 5. If we wanted to find out the complement event, we can actually solve this here. All right, that's what we were looking for. We were looking for the probability of not getting a 5. So the probability of not getting something, we can just subtract the likelihood of that event happening from 1. So I'm just rearranging this equation, solving it for the complement, subtracting a p the probability of A from both sides. Up top, I knew the probability of getting a 5 was 2 out of 12, which was 0.17. So I want to know the probability of not getting a 5. The probability of not getting a 5, not 5, will be equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a 5. That's what I know about complements. When you add the, an event and its complement together, you get 1. So here I could have gone through, oops, not 5. I'm saying not 5. It's probably better to say no 5 at all. We could have used the complement rule. The last thing I want to mention here is notice in this example, once again, we are writing out the sample space and looking for the favorable outcomes divided by the total number of elements in the sample space. As I mentioned in the last video, we're not always going to be able to write out the sample space, so we need to be able to calculate probability in other ways as well. In the next, mod next module pages, we're going to be talking about more complicated events, where it's not just one experiment or one trial that we're looking for or looking at.